And let me just tell you guys, that was hands down the worst epidural I have ever gotten ever. Hey Mountain Family, how's it going? So today I am going to tell you guys Andy's labor and delivery story. So it's Tuesday, February 7th. I had a doctor appointment at 9.45 that morning. And during the appointment, I told my OB that I had been having some streaking, which is true. And I just thought it was like my cervix changing. I really didn't think much of it because it was so light. And she looked at me and she said, because you've had a placenta abruption in your early second trimester and you're having some streaking with no cervical change because she had checked me and my cervix hadn't changed from three centimeters, which is what I was the week before. She said to avoid another abruption and to possibly lose her, it's just safer to go ahead and deliver today. And my eyes got really wide and I looked at Devin and he looked at me and we were like, we're having a baby today? And then she goes, if you'll just walk on over to the labor and delivery room and we're like, whoa, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> we need to find a babysitter. We have to take these girls home. Like, we have stuff to do. We can't just immediately walk on over there. And she was like, oh, okay, that's fine. Just come back in a couple of hours and we'll get you induced today. And I was like, Okay, I guess it's what we're doing today. I was like convinced that we weren't gonna have her anytime soon because I had no other signs or symptoms of labor coming on anytime soon. So I was pretty sure that I was gonna make it to 38 weeks and then she dropped that on us. And I was like, okay, I guess we're not. <laughs> so after we left the hospital, it was like a huge whirlwind of just getting stuff done and being so busy. We got home and Devin was calling family members to try to get someone to watch uh, Carly and Kenley. I was packing the hospital bag. We had to get lunch because I learned you do not go to a hospital when you're about to have a baby hungry. Because once you're there, they pretty much starve you the entire time you're there. And I'm not going to deliver on an empty stomach. It's kind of hard to have the energy to push a baby out when you're starving and tired. I mean, I'm just saying. So we got Subway. I finished packing the hospital bag and Devin found somebody to watch the girls. So we finally make it to the hospital around two o'clock and I get there and it's another whirlwind of being busy. One nurse is doing my IV. One nurse is doing my admission form that they have to do, you know, when they ask you all those questions and everything. And then after that, they put me on the monitors. And it took them forever, forever to find Andy's heartbeat. She was laying in a position that was making it really hard for them to get on the monitors. So they were like chasing her all over the place, trying to find a good place to put the monitor at. And so they finally found one. It took them forever, but they found it. And around three o'clock is when they started the Pitocin. As they were hooking me up to the Pitocin, they were talking to me about my birth plan. This hospital wants you to have a birth plan. They actually like write down what you want, what you don't want, everything like that. And I I told them that I did not want my water broken. I do not want my water broken before I get an epidural. I can't handle contractions on Pitocin with no epidural. My water is gone. They're like, okay, that's fine. And it was kind of like a we'll play things by ear kind of thing. So I labored for a couple of hours on the Pitocin without the epidural. So 5 o'clock p.m. rolls around. And I have progressed from a 3 to a 6. And then my doctor wanted me to back way off of Pitocin because I was progressing too fast. And she had to go do an emergency C-section. And she didn't want me to give birth by myself while she was doing the C-section. So she had me back way off of it. it. She cut it down by half. She did her emergency C-section. I laid there and labored for a little longer. Contractions weren't really that bad. I was handling them pretty well, but this is also before they broke my water. And once she was done through her C-section, she wanted the Pitocin to increase back up to where it was before. Once the Pitocin was back up to 20, I think it was, I th I'm pretty sure that's where it was last I checked. Uh, she wanted to break my water. And I said, before you do that, can I please have the epidural? They said, okay, that's fine. We'll call the anesthesiologist. He comes in like... I think 20-ish, 30-ish minutes later, he says, I gotta do a C-section real fast. I'll be right back. I'm just letting you know that I am on my way to you. I said, okay. So he comes back in and he starts my epidural. And let me just tell you guys, that was hands down the worst epidural I have ever gotten ever. The guy who did it messed it up three times before he finally got it right. The first time he told me that he hit bone. The second time he told me he hit ligament, and the third time he told me that he didn't put the catheter deep into my back enough, so he had to press on my back again to get it deep enough into my spine to actually thread it through. When he finally got it in, my back hurt so, so bad. It seriously felt like somebody just took a sledgehammer and just went to town on my back. 
And I remember laying there thinking to myself, how am I going to use my muscles to push this baby out if my back is hurting this bad? I was honestly scared. The hospital was really strict about what we could and could not film. So on top of Devin being very inexperienced and me like trying to tell him, you know, what to do, the nurses were telling me, hey, you can't film while doctors and nurses are in here doing medical stuff. So it was really hard for me to get any kind of footage and that is why the beginning of my birth vlog is the way that it is. Oh, you're gonna wake up. Oh. No, you're not. Oh, thank God. Anyway, <laughs> the hospital that I go to is really, really natural birth friendly. I've told you guys this before if you've been on my channel for a while. When they do give you the epidural, they do not give you enough of it to completely, like, knock you out. Like, you still feel pretty much everything. It's like they just take the edge off. So I still felt my contractions, but they weren't, like, excruciating. And I felt every single bit of her dilating me. And I could, like, tell when I would get more dilated because there would be more pressure. So I labor for a little while, and I'm feeling contractions and pressure and pressure and pressure. And for a little bit, I was handling it okay. But the more dilated I got, the harder it became to handle it. At one point, the nurse was checking me every 30 minutes because I was dilating more and more and more every 30 minutes. So finally I get to the point where I feel like I have to have a bowel movement, which I know from experience means I'm fully dilated and it's time to push. So they call my OB in and she checks me and she says, yep, it's time to push. And they get me all set up. And pushing is very much a bittersweet kind of thing for me. I want to push because I'm about to get this baby out. I'm about to not be pregnant anymore. And if I could just get her out, this will all be over. But I don't want to push because it hurts. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had an unmedicated birth or a somewhat medicated birth, but but crowning is the worst. I felt every single bit of that ring of fire. At one point, I told Devin, I can't do this. And he was like, yes, you can. I mean, crowning is intense. But finally, she was here at 10.03 p.m. on the 7th of February. The great thing about my epidural not really working is I got to feel that huge, big rush of endorphins and oxytocin and just basically that like otherworldly feeling that you feel right after birth. I got to feel that. And if you watch my birth vlog and you see me crying right after she was born, that's what I was feeling. I was feeling happiness and excitement and I was just like kind of mentally on another planet. I was just so happy. For the first hour, I just held her and we were all so happy and it was a really good moment. And then I breastfed for an hour, about 30 minutes each side. And then right after that, they bathed her, which I also have on video. And then it was my turn to have a shower. I got up and I went to the shower and I noticed that if I stand too long, I get really, really dizzy and lightheaded and like I'm going to pass out. So I sit down and I wait for it, that feeling to pass and then I stand up and I realize after a little bit I'm going to pass out. So I sit down, but it starts getting more and more frequent and eventually it gets to the point to where I can't stand up at all. I just have to sit because if I do stand, I'm going to pass out. I get really scared that I am going to pass out. So I yell for Devin and he comes in and he he asked me what's wrong and I was like I'm gonna pass out so he got a nurse and both him and the nurse wiped and dried me off and they put me in the wheelchair and we went to the recovery room I'm going to have to give big big props to my husband you guys might think this is funny but right after I had her sometime in between that hour that I was holding her and the other hour that I was nursing her he knew I would be hungry he knew that it had been a good over 12 hours since I've eaten and they had just delivered right before I I took my shower. So when we got to the recovery room, Devin immediately gave me some food. He was like, you gotta eat. I think your sugar's low. And I'm like, yeah, I think you're right. Another thing that I have to give Devin props for and that I feel really bad about, Devin let me hold her pretty much the entire time right after she was born. I got to hold her for like two hours. He got to hold her for a little bit while I was in the shower and while um, Andy was laying on the newborn bed thing, um, the warmer. He got to hold her for a little bit while I was showering, but not very long because I was passing out. <laughs> and then we got to the recovery room and Devin was like, my mom wants me to come home as soon as possible. And she doesn't want to stay over at our house just for this one night so I'm gonna have to go home and I was like I feel really bad because you've barely seen her he was like oh it's okay it's okay I'll just come back tomorrow morning it'll all be fine and as for the rest of the story well I vlogged it so if you guys want to watch it I will have a link in the description I'll also have a link up here thank you guys so much for watching if you want to follow me on social media my links are down below and I will see you guys later in a new vlog bye guys